I'm a detective for a small town in Oregon. So, about two weeks ago, this small town had its first real taste of crime in a good while. Nothing really ever happened here, so when Riley Goodman, a local woman who was known for her affinity towards nature, went missing during one of her normal hikes in the woodland that surrounds town. Then two days later, when a local teen, Ted Bunsworth, also went missing after a supposed drug and alcohol binge. So the chief of police ended up putting me on the case. Then finally, last night another person went missing. The local cook, Carl Finney. Ever since the first disappearance, Carl had been going around town telling anyone who would listen that Riley had been nabbed by the thing that lives in the trees. He had gone looking for them himself because the police don't know the difference between their heads and their asses, whatever that means. After numerous search efforts and hours at the cork board, we eventually decided it was a serial killer kidnapper since no bodies had been found, and we had searched every nick and cranny of those woods. As lead detective, I was tasked to do a stakeout comb over in the woods to find the bodies or any evidence of the kidnapper. So I fished my camping supplies out of a forgotten corner of my garage and loaded it into my car. I drove to the local camping grounds and set up shop. I pitched my tent, tied my food up in a tree, and started a fire. After about an hour, I decided to get to work. I grabbed a flashlight, as it would be getting dark soon. My lucky pocket knife I got for my birthday when I was 10, and my state-issued pistol, just in case. I had been walking around for about two hours trying to find anything, but it's hard to see when all you have is a flashlight that only shines about five feet in front of you. I heard the occasional critter skitter around me while I was walking, but nothing interesting happened. I figured I'd try searching by the river, because if the hikers had gotten lost, then they'd be by the water for obvious survival reasons. As I was walking along the river, something peculiar got caught in my peripheral, an old camping backpack. Thinking it belonged to one of the hikers, I searched through it. I found some clothes, and a wallet. It belonged to Jacob Peterson. He had gone missing last year around November. It's a shame really, he was a good guy and everyone around him loved him. One day he went on a hike and never came back. It was a real tragedy for the whole town. Maybe the serial kidnapper was him. I mumbled to myself with a chuckle. As if, he'd been gone so long. Nobody can survive in these woods for that amount of time with nothing but the clothes on their back. Just then, there was a loud rustle in the trees. Thump, thump. Two heavy objects fell behind me from the trees. I turned around in horror to see it was the half-eaten mangled corpses of Riley and Carl. The sudden strong stench of death gave me a sense overload and I immediately threw up my dinner, which consisted of hot dog and canned beans. After I was done puking, another rustle came from the trees and a loud primal screech followed. Then whatever made that horrendous sound came down from the canopy. In the darkness, I could make out a long, emaciated, slender shape. I drew my pistol and held my hand steady. The thing charged and I emptied a whole damn clip into it. It roared, but not in pain. In annoyance, I pissed the damn thing off. I booked it while it was stunned and reloaded my clip, but I didn't make it far. The thing climbed back into the trees and leapt in front of me, stopping me in my tracks. Without a moment's notice, the thing charged at me again. Before I could shoot it, it reached its long slender arm and slapped the gun out of my hand. It then tackled me and pinned me to the ground. The thing tried to gnaw on my neck, but I kept dodging just in time. During the struggle, I managed to get one arm free and got a hold of my knife. I quickly switched it open and began to cut at its throat. Its blood poured all over me and the thing howled in pain, but I didn't stop. I went until that motherfucker's head was off. Then taking a quick dip in the river, I got the head and body and dragged it all the way back to camp. I put its body on the fire and watched it burn. The ordeal was finally over. I knew what the thing was. I just didn't think they were real. That damn old cook was right. A Wendigo. A Native American legend. A cannibalistic monster born of starvation during the harsh winter. Now that I think about it, 
There is a reservation about two miles away from here. I've heard of these creatures before in stories. To see one in real life, and survive in one, I damn sure believe in them now. After the body was ash, I figured it out. It indeed had been Jacob who was the cause of the missing people, but it wasn't really Jacob anymore. I called the sheriff to let him know what happened. Not everything though. I told him I'd found the bodies of Riley and Carl. They had been eaten by a wild animal and that was it. End of story. Exhausted, I went into my tent to go to bed. As I was trying to fall asleep, I felt this nagging feeling, like I was forgetting something. Then it clicked. There were two bodies found. There were three missing people. Where was Ted? Just then I heard a rustling in the trees above my campsite. Fuck. Here I am writing this in my tent while Ted is outside my camp stalking me, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. I know I won't make it. Bullets are useless. My knife got ruined when I was wrestling Jacob and I had to put my fire out. I'm fast, but Ted's faster so I can't make a run for my car. All I ask is you take my story as a reminder. It lives in the trees.